Bodhipala Monastery near Adelaide on a sunny afternoon in springtime. Here is the large sign greeting all visitors and uh, right next to it is a standing Buddha statue protected by a small Thai style pavilion. You can still see the flower arrangements from their first ever katina last Sunday. Uh, beautiful flower arrangements. The Buddha in the Abhaya Mudra imparting fearlessness to all visitors to the monastery. Let's go further into the monastery. This is the view now arriving at the kitchen. Ajahnyana Dipu, the abbot, has overseen a lot of work here. The monastery is only about five years old. To the right you can see Ajahnyana Dipu, the abbot's kuti. And next to it is his office and the reception room. And here the kitchen where visitors right on arrival have plenty of space to arrange the food for arms offering. Here again the Sila Kuti, where the visiting Lumpur state, where Ajahn Kalyano has got suitable accommodation when he visits the monastery. And we can have a look inside the kitchen. Very well done, spacious. Arrangement. They have some the flies. We have to make sure the flies can get in. Here is the reception table where people can find free distribution dhamma materials. The large stainless steel tables where the food is offered buffet style to the monks. Very neat, clean arrangement microwaves, uh, all the required equipment, the fridge, the stove, another bench top, and here the sections for washing up very generously, four large things, and here a little corner where the monks often have their evening drink. Okay, we can come out again. Once again, the view of the kitchen facilities on arrival with a big bodhi leaf on top. And this time we pass by on the right. And here we have the new reception building. Uh, this is the abbot's kuti. Right next to it is the office. And then at the end of the building, which also accommodates male guests, they have built a very suitable reception hall for the abbot at Yana Depot to receive visitors. You can have Welcome, so we can have a little peek inside. Yeah. All the furniture, I was told by Adonjana Depot himself, was actually second hand and donated, and they have only uh, fully restored them. This beautiful furniture, all second hand restored by the monks seat for the abbot and a seat for very senior visiting monks and a line of monks on the left, Lumpur Cha, Lumpur Lien, Lumpur Anam and Lumpur Kalyano. And here on the left of them we have a Lumpur Opad who provided valuable advice on establishing Bodhipala Monastery. From here one gets further into the abbot's office where he is doing 
their important work getting the monastery established. Amazing what has been accomplished here in the last five years. So this time we are passing by the reception room. We have a little veranda, very suitable for the short wise arms round where monks can receive the wise on Pindapata. And here the central area of the monastery with a new statue of Venerable Sivali. Venerable Sivali was a monk at the Buddha's time and his dana parami were so great that he would often receive more alms food than even the Buddha himself. He had so much dana parami that wherever he went, even in deserted areas, poor areas, he would always get plenty of food, plenty of all requisites. And uh, this auspicious figure is here right in the center. Maybe we can have a look around. This is the main Dhamma hall behind the green bushes. The accommodation building for male lay visitors, monks can stay there as well, with a veranda for the wise arms round on bigger days. On small days inside the kitchen is actually enough space for a small arms round. Here on that side they have separate bathroom facilities for visitors. Sivali and uh, over here is actually the kuti I've been staying in during my visit. I'm very happy in that kuti, uh, well protected from the heat in summer. The walls are made from rocks, about one meter thick, maybe half a meter. I don't want to exaggerate. Like in many places in South Australia, they have these uh, roses growing, and in particular here on the side. Look at this splendor of pink roses right around the little window where I can look out of my kuti. Isn't it gorgeous? On the other side, the abbot's kuti, a very similar build, uh, thick walls made from a rock protecting against the heat. Even in winter it doesn't get too cold, very temperate inside that kuti. Here the little bodhi tree which I recently planted, just about to take roots, taking roots. Planted actually this year, surrounded by white roses here a small rotunda where people can uh, sit down protected from the sun and the rain and here the main dhamma hall a slightly extended and renovated building which already was there when the monastery bought the land. Um, the main buildings here, like the Kuti I stayed in, are from the 1880s, I believe. Let's have a look into the Dhamma Hall. Here's the main shrine room, the Dhamma Hall, where the monks eat and where this morning we chanted Pati Mokha and where the evening chanting is uh, conducted, the morning chanting. Buddha statue with Lumpur Cha and Lumpur Man, Lumpur Man on the left side, uh, the right side of the Buddha, he is more senior. Lumpur Cha on the right, that is the left side from the Buddha's perspective. 
small Buddha statues in glass cabinets on either side, the windows protected by timber shutters from the strong South Australian sun, seats for the monks near the monks' entrance. The lay entrance, the small receptacles for sharing mallets, seats, a bench at the back for those elderly or people who find it too difficult to sit on the floor, white roses, a lush green tree outside the entrance, we have the floor mats. Right across the kuti I'm staying in, the little body tree, and we can go out again.